Sarah's test yeah. contents of JS2 as the use to which it was put. JS2 was put by Corporal Brown. Well, yes, but in one sense, that's of some importance in the sense that, 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 that it's, it, it demonstrates, in one sense, how important JS2, because JS2 was raw data, which was then presented by uh, Corporal Brown uh, through, uh, effectively, his own um, interpretation of it. So that's why, why the summary is there, because he, he was effectively presenting the evidence. Where do we find a summary of the content? Uh, I'm not sure there's a... Sorry, no, I think it's fair to say one doesn't. I will write yeah. down a trail to find out exactly what, what was on JS2 and I've recently seen what appears to be JS2, which entirely fits the summing up. But I can tell you what it contains now or we'll wait until I begin. It would be helpful for us to know what it contains. Yes. And perhaps, Mr. Sardin, if I, if I say what I believe it contains, yeah. Mr. Sardin can then take uh, his instructions. Um, my Lord, what? Uh, JS2 was a disc, as I understand it, and then from that disc, Corporal Brown drew up a spreadsheet, various spreadsheets. Now, the first spreadsheet were consisted of texts. The second was a spreadsheet of phone calls. And it was drawn up, these spreadsheets were drawn up from four telephone numbers. That is to say, Mr. Charles, phone number, the deceased's phone number, uh, Mr. Palmer's phone number and Mr. Campbell's phone number. So they were the only phone numbers which were the subject of JS2. A, in relation to texts. B, in relation to calls. Now, as far as the texts were concerned, what they consisted of was the following. Text between the deceased and his girlfriend on the 14th and 16th of August 2011. 16th. 16th. Of August 2011, that being the day of the decay, we say. They, those texts are summarized in the uh, summing up at E4788 to E4791, and we also summarize them in our case at uh, 6227, Paris 40 and 41. But essentially, they're, they're the ones where the deceased is saying, uh, I'm getting more worried. Um, the second set of texts are from to, to and from Palmer between the 8th and the 12th of August 2011. But they appear to be of no importance at all. They don't appear to be referred to in the summing up. They were read out to the jury, but uh, they, 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 they don't add anything. The third set of texts were those from and to Sean Campbell which are, to an extent, incriminating, and they are referred to in the summing up. Uh, they suggest that on the day of the killing, but before the killing, Campbell knew that um, uh, the deceased was going to be executed. He had to die. And they suggest that after the killing, he knew the killing had taken place and they needed to get away. And you can see a summary of those texts at, um, uh, in summing up at 4989 to 4991. That's where they're set out and, and explained. And importantly, my lords, it is a point. You may have wondered, what about the other defendants? Now, it does seem as if texts were collected from the other defendants' phones, but they, after the voir dire, were excluded. And that, therefore, means there are no texts passing from St. John, passing to and from St. John, or Jones, or Shane Williams. There were, they were originally in the original exhibit before it got to the jury, but by the time it got to the jury, those texts were all gone. As far as as far as the call of telephone logs is concerned, that ran from the 10th to the 17th of August 2021, and what they did was indicate the nearest cell site which picked up the respective calls, and they did show, uh, again, when Palmer was receiving or making a call, likewise Campbell, uh, likewise uh, the deceased, and likewise Chow. I should say, the, the, and Chow. 
Now, there don't appear to have been, as far as I can make out, any texts from Chow. So that's the nature of JS2. But the only really incriminating material in JS2, as such, are the text messages passing to and from Campbell shortly before and shortly after uh, the killing. I say incriminating, of course, those between the girlfriend and the deceased were incriminating, but they are not from Campbell, they're from the deceased, so. I think I've given you the references where you can find it all in summing up. We do, uh, we don't summarise all of it uh, in the case, but we do summarise quite a bit of it in our case. We have tried to get hold of, exhibit, I think it was Exhibit 10, there are some difficulties getting hold of Exhibit 10, that's all I can say. I have seen what we believe to be Exhibit 10 in relation to the texts. I was handed another exhibit, which plainly was the unedited version in relation to telephone calls. So we haven't put that in. But we can make available what I believe to be the exhibit in relation to text messages. And did the judge sum up in relation to the cell site evidence? Uh, no, not really, no. apart from what I've yes. just shown. I think it's fair to say not much appears to turn on the cell site evidence. No. I will address you later as to why I say very little turn on it. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say, from the appellant's point of view, one of the reasons for... Um, in one sense, perhaps not drilling down into the details of JS2 was for two reasons. Firstly, the clear position of the Crown, as I say, which is to rely on JS2 as being part of the reason why they argue that proviso should be applied in relation to the jury. That, we would submit, is a clear indication of the potential importance of JS2. The other is that, as I've already indicated, the, the clear indication is that this was a case where, um, in particular, the only direct witness, Mr Chow, was someone who uh, appears to have been regarded as um, unreliable by the jury uh, on the basis of, given the, acquit the acquittal I've already drawn attention to. And that demonstrates the potential importance of the uh, technological evidence. Can I go back, though, to the point that I was trying, that I was really, the reason I was talking about what was being argued below and drawing attention to the fact that there was no uh, debate about the, uh, uh, well, there, 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 it's clear, it was accepted that there was an argument that the, uh, the, uh, JS2 should be uh, uh, not admitted in light of the Charter, and in particular the breach of the Charter. The reason I draw attention to that is because effectively the, what, what the Crown does is argue that what is now being put before this court is a, a new point. Um, that's uh, a part of their, the, the Crown's response. Um, 